guys, we're here. Yeah. The game is on. We had a lovely sleep there at Forest Lodge. Lovely accommodation as always. We are now going to go and head on to the wading banks and hopefully catch some sandies. And an angry comb or two. One day. I know there's a couple of zombies around and I know that's what Andre wants to catch. Oh, I'll, I'll, no, I'll I'm sure. sticking to the small fish, boy. Sorry. The small fish. Uh, you know, and what happened to the 100 kilo less. sandy? No, well, it's 100 kilo, it's small Can fish. I swim it? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, because Amy at least got a fight getting it back. <laughs> Basically we are at Zini uh, the wading banks got a lonely tree just there to our left of us we're gonna try and catch our famous sand shark hopefully i get a decent one today right conditions right everything lovely bonnies that we've got a little frigate actually but anyway first bait in the water normally gets the first bite bait is as frozen as can be dry ass that we heard just exposing uh, a lot more of the actual flesh and that so i'm just going to cut off the gills a bit i like to open it up as much as possible just it allows a lot more of that smell and flavor to go through. I'm using a Nano Tuna Circle with my dangle. Um, this is a 90 pound surflon. It's very soft and supple. Gives a lot of movement. The sea is not big. If you have a look at it, it's actually very, very small. Movement's going to be imperative here at the moment. Just opening it up to put my dangle through. And there it is there. My trusty Kingfisher cotton. We've got a lovely rip current just behind me going heading north. So basically the smell should be going that way. So hopefully when I throw on this side all their smell goes that way. A lot of cotton on it. It'll actually squeeze the flavour out. I'm just gonna open this up a bit here. Okay, I'm gonna do a bit of banging here, so just watch out. pretty much my bait done. There's a rip current heading that way. So I'm gonna go and fish on the left hand side of that actual rip. We're sitting on a lovely little spit that's come out here. The water's deep, you can see it. It's got color. Bit of clean water in that area over there um, for the sandies and honeycones to be. But there's a lovely rip there with a lot of dirty water. I'm gonna have my first throw over there. I've obviously got my dog fight. The northeasterly is now starting to blow after a long westerly period. There's no reason these diamonds won't be here. The water's not cold enough, but diamonds aren't really our target species today. It's definitely sandies and honeycombs for this water temperature. Remember when you come up to the banks, you have a good hat with you as well. Very important. The sun kills you here. Suntan lotion as much as you can and apply it regularly yeah especially at zini hello guys uh yeah as you can see i'm, I'm finally out of the office again it's only been a year <laughs> um but yeah as ray mentioned yeah we're at uh, lone tree up here at the banks yeah, as you can see it there in the background we've got a few different mixes of baits i've gone with a, a red eye mix specifically looking for a sandy so I've got a full nylon trace, that uh, pink fathom line that we stocked there, Kingfisher stuff, by 1.3, a nice Tenno J-hook. I prefer J's when it's coming to Sandy's, but the circles work just fine for them. Tackle we're using up here, um, we're not fishing for small fish, so we're using our, our strong stout tackle. I've got my Saltus 8000 over here, that is loaded with 64 pound gator braid on the back, and then 50 pound J-braid on top. This stuff is strong as all hell, you'll never break it, and you can really put some power onto the fish. And that, I've paired that to a 15 foot uh, Saltus Delete. That's the 6 to 8 ounce. 
and that can really throw pretty much anything that you ever wanted it to and it pulls like an absolute dream. I've got my first inquiry already. The bait hasn't defrosted enough. He pulled me down and dropped it. Only because the bait is still too hard. This nice little bunnies from Afghan Marine. I'm gonna start off with one of them. Just trim the head and then start building it. And why you do that is uh, so that the cotton holds onto the foam. It just keeps a more steady bait. You can also use toothpicks through the foam and then cutlets. Should be enough. Now by opening it up like that, you've got that instant smell and flavor in the water, all that blood. Now this is such a lovely area in the summer when the northeaster pumps. Currently the water is actually a bit warm, even with a north, lot of northeasterly winds last week. There was now a day and a half, two days of south, almost a southeast wind, which is not great. But with the color here, very positive. Color play, plays a big role, the ginger beer color. Yeah. When you do a bait like this, remember it's all frozen. You can use your hands to shape it like you want because it's nice and soft. <laughs> hey, you may be shocking there. What's that? We must now bring a, a giant shark song. All right, just starting off, we're spreading out a bit. Um, raise on that uh, rip. Here's another rip. Mike's in the middle. And after I cast it now, that looks awesome. You'll see there's a bit of a bang. A rip going out much further, more colored water. Uh, or a better, better color there. That would have been a better bet. But I'm here now, I'm not just gonna reel in. I wanna see what this does. Obviously at night time you're going to get more pulls than in daytime, in gen you know, general manner of speaking. We're just here to hook a couple of really good fish. First pass this morning on my Daiwa tournament, 15 foot. So Tiga Dogfight 8000, J-Braid, 50 pound. Small, small fish. A little milky. Right, it's a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> Nice to see there you got hooked straight in the bottom. There we go guys. Little mock shark. You got the nice long nose there. You can see it's a male with the little claspers over there. Those two sticking there. Look at that beautiful eye and that colour on the top of him there. Let me get it in the camera. We let him go back. And hopefully stay away from the zombies. So yeah, as we were saying, um, we're on a waiting bank over here. This is called the banks and Tanzini banks. Now when we talk about waiting. They're all different kinds of waiting, I mean different levels, but basically what it means is now you're not standing from the shore itself, which is where the water washes up to, you're actually going walking into the water. Now, that can be anything from these banks that you see here in the background that are very, very flat and exposed, so you're almost not getting wet at all, and you're walking all the way to the front, to actually having to wade through a trough at somewhere like, I don't know, TV, um Shoti or La Mercy Beach or something like that. We have to wade through a trough to get onto a back bank to throw. Now, when it comes to wading, there are quite a few precautions that you need to, need to adhere to. The, the bank goes and it will drop off suddenly at the back. So the waves do pop up right at the end of the bank. So you don't want to stand on that edge because you often get a swell, they'll pop up, maybe wet you at the worst or at the best case scenario, just wet you. Otherwise, it could actually sweep you off the bank. Now, Always wait, if you're gonna be waiting, make sure there's someone on the beach or with you waiting so that they're gonna keep an eye on you in case something does go wrong. Don't wait near a, near a bank, um, near a big drop off. And we're getting a bite here. And um, make sure that if you aren't a strong swimmer that you're not gonna be waiting in the deep, deep water. So try and stick to the shallower banks, much like what we are on here. And, um, yeah, just be safe out there guys. It's, uh, fishing isn't, is a dangerous sport, it can be. So, just be safe. The bite has gone quiet now. So I'm gonna go on to Ray's Ultimate Trace. 
the Nano Demon Circle Look that Mustard have brought out. It's a new one, it's a triangular metal. So if you hook a big sandy, it's not gonna open up on me. It's small enough for sandies. I can get small fish, I can get big fish, they are sharp. 90 pound surf line. Basically that's what the whole trace looks like at the end of the day. I'm gonna put a mozzie and uh, Bonnie cutlet on make a nice small bait a little bit bigger than that and basically I'm gonna throw it and see what happens try for all that the ultimate sand shark hopefully will come around and jump on it to attach it I'm just gonna show you a knot that I've been using go through the eye of the hook twice so if I go through once twice like that basically give yourself a decent bit of braid to work with and just wrap it around one two three four four times three times doesn't make a difference just go as many as you can and all I do is I just lightly pull it tight and that hasn't failed me yet that knot basically I'm just skinning a moss bunker it's been in and out my bait box a bit so I'm just gonna quickly skin it still looks good underneath very important to use a sharp knife when doing this because the mozzie skin is quite tough especially the back part of it with the scoots are nice cutlets so that's pretty much my dangle with the hook my demon circle and you don't want to cover this area too much, so at least your gape is still there. I'm using the heavy cotton here, the heavy Kingfish uh, latex cotton. The heavy side of the uh, chocker hammer just to soften the bait up a bit. What it also does, it makes it easier when you're putting the cotton on to actually bind onto it. the smell out that's why I also hit it with the chocker hammer is to allow the smell out the advantage is you get a lot more smell and flavor into the water um, a lot quicker disadvantage is it does attract all the mulkies and spinners around and shad so it's got its advantages and disadvantages let's see rather get a bite make a lot more baits the fish will come the bigger fish will come and like I always say, don't be scared of cotton. As it's defrosting, it will squeeze out all the blood in that. Blood and guts. And that's what you want ultimately at the end. As much smell out as quick as possible. I'm not making a big bait. Sand sharks generally do not like big baits. Honey cones as well. And as this bunny is defrosting, you can see how the, the cotton is actually pulling or squeezing the blood out. So that's the ultimate bait with the ultimate trace. Looks like the mokies are wild today. for a Zambezi. We just need to get it to breathe. Actually, we need some fresh water. Okay, guys, I'm gonna bring up my slide rod quickly. Saltiga, 50 HA. And a saltest, six to nine ounce rod. Beautiful colors on these cob. Now, this is a snapper, guys. The size limit's different. You see the two front teeth? Almost like K9 sitting there. Look how beautiful their colors is on their scales. Okay, I'm gonna ask Tyron uh, on the other camera to 
quickly help us out to bring me the live bait once I've passed. Just a seven ounce should be enough. I want to cast it too far for the live bait. One of the most majestic, in my opinion, sharks on our coastline. It's quite prolific in this area, everyone knows it. And that's the legend of the Zambezi sharks that swim around and roam around here. And if you get a bit of a live bait here, swim bait's very difficult to hook them. Because a lot of times you get those packs of Zambies that come and they bite you off. So your hookup rate and landing rate on that is, is quite low. But on a slide bait like this, with a nice, you know, like that, about a two kilo cob or a shad, it's probably your best odds in hooking it and landing it. Um, that obviously requires the multiplier and monofilament, and that's what you have to do that with. If you go slightly bigger, you can use your grinder so you can swim like a, a brown skate, a 10 kilo. But the Zambezis only eat live bait. Another thing is they prefer closer to the higher tides. Well, that's from my experience. You obviously can get them anytime. So I'm putting it out a bit early, but that's fine. It will hang around then. I hope it stays alive. So I hooked it on the front lip. It's a nice carrying position. It keeps the fish's mouth open so it gets a lot of water and swims. And one just behind the head up top so any Zambezi should be able to swallow that obviously a java could pick that up a black tip can pick it up uh, which reminds me i didn't put steel leader which for the black tips is advisable um, but yeah let's hold thumbs that a Zambezi comes for a visit and a tussle today that's exactly what i said this morning and even before the trip I'll be happy if opportunity allows it to get a bait out for a Zambezi shark. So we got to this point, can't complain about that. Now it's just the teeth that needs to play with. Uh, good fight, tackle I'm confident on, and uh, great photos and a great release. Should follow, I hope. We're all got old times, that, that, that would happen. Most resilient shark as well. What a fight. Uh, if, you, if you start getting them over 120, 150 kilos, Everyone that's caught one like that will tell you what a stubborn shark. Slow fighters, but very, very strong and stubborn. Um, definitely a worthy opponent. And I haven't caught one in a while yet, so it will be great, great to get another one. Chase got wrapped up. Ah, what a mess. Yeah, that was a bit of bad luck. Something picked it up. Slack line came in. And then it picked up another trace with a milky still on. A dead milky. Um, and it just took the tail of the cob. Um, so I think it was actually when he swam away, it was stuck in the other trace with sink and it pulled literally out of his mouth. Um, so I've just cut the head off. We're going to get that out quickly. Sharky doodle doodle doo Because that's all it is. Multi multi. Multi multi. It goes to show you a little trace like this. There's my nino circle look. How that fish got that into his mouth, I don't know. Because hell, that is unbelievable. Okay, so this is a little hammer. And if you look at him properly, there's the teeth marks of a shark that tried to eat him. Look at this. Anyway, good luck to you. Sharky doodle doodle doo. Mwah. It's amazing how that little thing tried to eat that. And there he comes. Hey! The one good thing about Ray's ultimate trace, 
If it you get your small fish, your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. With a lovely little specimen. Little scallops on him. Lovely little fish. Taking my time, as you can see him there on the surface there, playing around. Okay, another one of those little sharks that we get here. And it's a male, you can see by the claspers. I'm going to go put him back in the water now. Okay, Mike has just swam a, a milk here. And it's just been eaten now by a shark. So Mike, I'm going to tell you to walk back onto the beach. Are you ready, Freddy? We're going to do the countdown. One, two, three. Bail arm over. Let it take you down right. And hold on to the sport and hit. And hit! And hit! <laughs> That's what I love to see! Dandy! On the dandy! Oh, okay, that's what I wanted to see, guys. Thank you very much. Definitely Zambi. Zambi, got it. Okay, well done, Michael. Go higher. Yeah, yo, see, this fish is taking plenty of strength. And from the bend in the rod, you can see his drag is not not loose. He comes backing. There he goes backing. So guys, that's 300 meters of top shot, 50 pound, and then backing probably about 550 of this uh, 64 pound gator. We don't give him a break because he won't give us one. He's giving the big shark years, and his name's not Mike. You guys just want to pump, use your legs. Our magic going on. You guys, we've got top shot coming back in, and you'll see that cat's paw is such a small knot, shouldn't have cancelled that chiropractor appointment. Zambi two step. A little bit grumpy. When you've got a fish like that, it's big and stubborn. And at the moment we're sitting on about 80 kilos. When you've got a fish like that, the more he runs, the quicker he actually gets tired. And this one likes that 300 meter mark for some reason. Sorry for my diet, he wanted that fish. He wanted to mess around and be a hero, and now he's suffering. The pain, the pain is there, I say. Grandpa, shock, do, 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 do. Grandpa. <laughs> oh, he didn't oh, like that. <laughs> Grandpa shark is eating him. I've seen a lot of guys fight fish and in the beginning they fight the fish hard as they can they tie themselves out and the fish always invariably wins it's all about conserving your energy as much as possible when it comes to big fish like this and taking your time you put the effort in to catch him take your time drink a lot of fluids and yeah just he will come he's a fish he has to come he's got no mother he's got no father We've got a grandpa and a granny, but he woke up. And yeah, unfortunately, the sand is so hot at the moment that it's burning through Mike Dahlia's feet. What's happening is the, the, the shark is actually arcing to the right and then arcing to the left. And normally when he goes right, he's going with the current, so he takes a bit of string. We've been close on an hour now with that fish. The next big thing is going to be to land it here over the bank so of course the closer the fish gets the more chance you've got of it rubbing on the bank and there's Mike standing there like Mr. Manier there basically we're sitting on the sand dunes here trying to keep the line up above that bank that we were waiting on earlier on and this fish doesn't like it he's just going back south again At one stage he was going left nicely 
is a lovely place to land the fish over here but now he's changed his mind and he's gone uh, right again <laughs> Probably a Zambi, 90% sure of that. Yeah, you can't win the ball. 